Hey everyone, welcome into the At Flippin' Hippo's YouTube channel. I'm Star the Flippin' Hippo. Today is September 16th and it's a Monday, which means it's time for What Sold on eBay! Just like every week, we're going to take a walk through the Instagram photos from the week of the photos of our shipping, our packages that we send out every day. And then we'll jump on over to eBay. I'm going to show you guys some highlights, some bolos, and some bread and butter and filler items that we flipped between last Monday and yesterday, which was Sunday. This photo that we're looking at right now is today's shipping photo. We had uh, 28 packages go out, 27 eBay sales, and one Poshmark sale. So you guys can see that sales are definitely getting better. I think it is a combination of both the long, slow climb out of the summer slump as we head into Q4, and that Keith and I have been hustling pretty hard on the back end I'm feeling much, much better. I'm back to my old self, if not even better and more energized. We've been listing extra. We've been doing more work. And if you tuned into my live show last evening, I did issue a challenge to all of my viewers as we head into Q4 for the next two weeks because believe it or not, Q4 starts two weeks from tomorrow. And so the challenge I issued was to double the amount of listings that you do every day. And if that's absolutely not feasible for you, at least do more than you usually do. If you usually do five, try to do seven. If you usually do 10, try to do 12. And I am attempting to participate in the challenge with you guys. My goal is normally 10 a day, sometimes 15. I'm going for 15 to 20 a day on my own. And Keith is attempting uh, 10 to 15 a day on his own, which is a lot for him. So, um, you know, we're going to see what happens when you list a lot more on the back end. If you have to let other things go for now, I think that would be okay because Q4 for eBay is a really big deal and you want to have a lot of listings going in. So if you need an extra half an hour to list extra on eBay a day and you share your posh closet twice a day rather than three times a day for the next two weeks, that would be okay. Um, whatever you need to do to make it happen, if you can balance it all, that'd be great. You really should be sharing your plush closet three times a day. I used that as an example because that's where I'm getting my extra half hour from. Um, but yeah, I did issue that challenge. I encourage everyone to participate. If you didn't watch the live show last night, I'll have it pop up at the end of the video and you can watch it whenever you have time. So moving forward, you can see last Monday was pretty good. 20 sales in 19 packages. Those were all eBay sales. Our Poshmark was pretty dead in the water for a couple of weeks while I was not well and not doing what I should be doing. Kind of woke up and you'll start to see as the week goes on. 10 packages, 7 eBay and 3 Poshmark last Tuesday. Wednesday we had 10 packages, 8 were eBay and 2 on Poshmark. So you can kind of see that putting in work on Poshmark is starting to wake that platform up as well and increase those sales. 7 packages on eBay, or sorry, 7 packages, 6 were eBay and 1 was Poshmark. And then on Friday we finished out the week with 11 packages, nine were eBay and two were Poshmark. So things are definitely, definitely starting to pick up. Uh, I hope it's that way for everyone. Just keep trucking along. We are definitely starting that climb out of the summer slump. You guys should start to see increase, increasing numbers of sales and you should be selling higher dollar items a little bit more often as we come into October. And then once Q4 is in full swing, um, things will definitely increase for everyone. People spend more money in Q4. It just is. Everything will sell in Q4, even used clothing. All right, let's jump over to eBay, guys. Let's start with the plush because they're my favorite. That's why I'm the plushie queen. We'll start with this Adventure Planet giraffe. He's a 10-inch giraffe. He's cute, isn't he? He's pink. I had like two or three of these pink giraffes, different brands, that I got from the Goodwill. They were all 50 cents. And I just thought that they were so cute and unique because they're pink drafts. And they all sold or got listed at different prices depending on their brands. This little guy, I listed him for 12 and I did not, or I did take a best offer of $10.50 for him. He shipped first class in a poly bag. I believe he weighed like two ounces. So he was like selling a tie almost. 
Here we have Disney Jake and the Neverland Pirates plush from Disney under the Just Play. So you guys, when you do source for Disney, if it's Just Play, Hasbro, Mattel, things like that, they're not as valuable as the Walt Disney World, the Disney Parks, and the Disney Store. So just be careful that you're checking these tushy tags. If they have Just Play, Hasbro, Mattel, etc., you want to pay less. You don't want to pay up for that. Those are always going to be a little bit less uh, as far as what you can list them at and what they'll sell for. I still pick them up though because I find them for 50 cents. Jake was 50 cents. And he sold for $11 and he shipped in a poly bag first class. Here is a Charlie Brown Christmas guy. He's been around for a while. I want to say that he came from the Benz, which makes him pretty old. That's okay though. Some plush is just really long tail and can take years to sell. If you guys had seen my uh, live interview with Robert, Zombie Bargain Hunter. He is the other plush royalty, I'll say. He does a lot of plush. Um, he even says that some of his take years to sell. Plush can be long tail. So when you, when you decide that you're going to start sourcing plush or that you're going to get into plush, keep that in mind. They can be very long tail. Uh, if indeed he did come from the bins, he was about 10 cents, but I'm pretty sure that's where he came from. Um, I know I wouldn't have paid more than 50 cents for this if it was from Goodwill, but I want to say he's been he's been around for so long that I'm sure he's from the Benz. So he would have been 10 cents by weight. And he sold for $11 and shipped first class in a poly bag. Y'all know, I tell you that, yes, Beanie Babies are not that good to source. There are exceptions, though. The Beanie Boos are one of those exceptions. The Glitter Eyes especially make them more valuable. This one was a Claire's exclusive, which made her more valuable. Um, she's Thai Silk, which made her more valuable. Um, I just say, you know, if you see Beanie Boos in the wild and they're like a quarter at a yard sale or 50 cents, pick them up. Worst case scenario, you're going to get 10 bucks for it. Um, but they can go upwards of 20 30 and $40 sometimes, depending on their size, if they're the larger ones and the characters. So I always just pick them up, bring them home, I'll comp them. Sometimes I'm pleasantly surprised, and sometimes it's just a good bread and butter flip. Uh, Charlotte is her name. Charlotte was a nice surprise. So she was $0.50. Cents. She sold for $15 and shipped first class in a poly bag. I did put one wrap, a bubble wrap, around her. Uh, body there to hold her hang tag tight against her to keep it from getting creased or bent in shipping. Y'all know who this is. This is Scooby-Doo. He is super cute. He weighed a pound on his own, so when I listed him, I did list him with calculated shipping. You can see he's almost two feet tall. He's a pretty big Scooby-Doo. And so I did accept the best offer on him. He had been around for a little while. I accepted $15 and then they paid for the shipping in addition to that. Because he didn't have anything special or anything I was worried about getting hurt in shipping, I did not put him in a priority box. We instead put him in, uh, we took two of our medium sized poly bags and kind of Franken bagged him. We put his bottom end in one and then another bag over his head and then kind of taped him together and still shipped him priority mail, but it kept the weight down and we didn't have to use one of our boxes. Oh, I should tell you, I paid 99 cents for him at Goodwill. Rocket Raccoon here was 50 cents at the Goodwill. He talks. He's super cute. He has a couple phrases he says. I did let him go for $19 on a best offer and I shipped him in a smaller box. It was a 7x7x7. Seven by seven by seven. Uh, just to protect him because he is a talker. He doesn't have any openings on him where you can take out that. You guys might know about that little pack inside a plush that you can take out and get their batteries out. He doesn't have one of those. He's just something you squish and he talks. So I wanted to protect him in shipping, so he went in a box. And he still went first class. He was very lightweight. This turtle was $0.99 cents at Goodwill. Donatello. The purple turtle. He's my favorite. Can you guess why? <laughs> uh, he was pretty big. Let me pull that up again. He's about two feet long. 
but he didn't weigh a lot. So even though he was big like this, he, he didn't weigh a pound. Um, his legs folded up very easily onto the front of his shell hair, and then I wrapped his arms around his legs, and we kind of Franken-bagged him as well. He shipped first class. He did sell for $19.69. This Build-A-Bear is so cute. She has like a little glitter skirt on. She was 99 cents at the Goodwill. She's a Build-A-Bear, My Little Pony. She may have been $1.99. Um, I think I paid 99 cents for her, but I know there were a couple of the Build-A-Bear ponies I did up pay, up pay for for $1.99. She had a little mark here from where the price tag was on her. So I took a photo of it and disclosed that. She did weigh a pound on her own, so she got listed with calculated shipping. And I took a $19 best offer on her, and she shipped in a big poly bag as well. She didn't have anything on her that I was worried about protecting and shipping. All right, now we're going to move into some of the jeans. This is a brand I don't really source anymore for anything H&M Divided. When, when I first started out and I kind of was learning, I did buy a lot of the H&M Divided because I guess I just didn't know better back then. I'd find it for 99 cents and buy the women's blouses and shorts and jeans and everything else. Um, I still do pick up the booty shorts because you guys know I'm non-discriminatory with those. I'll buy all the brands of those for 99 cents. Um, but I did pick these up because they were a small size, the size 2. And I know that I've said this before, but I do just as well with the super tiny small sizes as I do with plus sizes. They're like the other end of the spectrum. They're just as hard to find. They're just as difficult to get in brick and mortar stores. So girls who wear these smaller sizes do shop online. Um, so they were a smaller size and they were super skinny. They, I just like the look of them. So I picked them up for 99 cents. I accepted a best offer of $18 for them and they shipped first class. Here's another brand I typically avoid, but again, the look of these, I had to get them. They were 99 cents and like I've said, there's an exception to everything. If there is a NOLO, there is an exception to that NOLO uh, and this would be the exception for Bongo. These are super, super wide leg, bell bottom, hippie 70s flare jeans. They were just too, too cute for me to leave behind on the rack. So they sold for $18.50 on a best offer, and I believe they shipped in a padded flat. Uh, yes, they did. And they were 99 cents if I forgot to tell you. These are a J. Crew men's jeans. I'm kind of iffy on sourcing J. Crew anymore. It used to be a brand that sold pretty good on Poshmark. It still kind of does. But I've noticed the women's jeans are starting to sit a little bit longer and longer on Poshmark. And it used to be that they sold over there better than eBay. Um, but the men's jeans are the exception there. The women's jeans, they've got to be like, you know, something really cool for me to pick up or 99 cents only. Um, but the men's jeans do pretty good on both platforms still. I paid 99 cents for these and they sold for $24.86 and they shipped in a padded flat. You guys know, I don't have to tell you again, <laughs> I talk about these all the time. The men's BKE jeans with the names, this particular pair is Carter. There's also Derek and Tyler and um, there's just a whole slew of them. But if you ever see the men's jeans, that have a men's name as the style of the jeans. They are a bolo. I will pay up to $6.99 for these at the Goodwill. Absolutely. So we got a bunch in that box that we purchased, uh, the wholesale box that we purchased through Casey via one of his viewers that was going out of business. I listed them at 50, accepted a best offer of 40, and they shipped in a padded flat. Uh, on average, most of the items in that box cost $2 and some change. These were free to us. Athletech Kmart shoes. My friend that went out of business last year in December, some of you may remember, um, just gave me all of her eBay inventory when she decided she was done. And this was one of the things she gave me. 
So I went ahead and listed them because they were free to me. Maybe I wouldn't source this brand, um, but they were free, so they got listed. And I accepted a best offer $17 on them, and they shipped. Uh, it says economy here. That's what the buyer purchased. It was actually cheaper on our end to send it, send it, send it, ship it, priority. So that's an upgrade for them. So we did ship it priority mail in a priority box. They did pay for the shipping. Um, one tip, guys, if you're ever going to change the shipping from what the buyer paid for, make sure you're only doing that if it's an upgrade. If it's cheaper for you to ship priority than economy, which is parcel ground select, you can do that because you're upgrading them for free. But don't go backwards. Don't If they pay for priority, don't ship it parcel. If they pay for priority, don't ship it first class. Never ever go backwards. That's a really good way to get in trouble, get shipping dings, get negative feedback. But if you can ship it cheaper and upgrade them at the same time, absolutely do that. That's a good way to get good feedback because they're going to get it faster than they thought they were. These Franco Sarto women's shoes came from a yard sale. The yard sale where I picked up 21 pairs of shoes for $100. This particular pair was wrapped in bubble wrap and shipped in a poly bag. First class. I accepted a best offer of 18 on these. This pair also came from the very same yard zone. Life Stride. Some women's nice to heels. I do pretty good with this Life Stride soft system. Um, I get them, you know, if I get like a bulk deal like that where I can get a, bun a bunch of shoes for really cheap if I find them 99 cents. I wouldn't really pay too much for these, but I do well with these. I had uh, two pairs of these that came from that sale. There was a lighter tan, or tan pair and this darker brown pair. This pair sold for $18.75. Buyer paid shipping. I shipped it in a shoebox. This pair also came from that same yard sale of 21 pairs of shoes for $100. There were some Dansko clogs in there as well. They've been selling also. Um, those have been primarily selling on Poshmark though. This is the clogs brand of nursing clogs. These were super cool. The silver shiny black model look. And they paid $30 for them and they paid shipping. I shipped them in a priority shoe box. Here's a Columbia PFG men's vintage fishing shirt. These are definitely a bolo. You want to look for the shirts that say Omni Shade, and they have this little vent in the back, the little flap. These are a definite bolo. This one went for a little bit less than normal because it did have this M patch on the front of it. Uh, normally, if they're just plain, you can get like $25 for them. It's 30 if it's like an extra large size. This was only a size medium, and it had that patch on it. So it went for a little bit less. We did accept $18 best offer on it. And in fact, got a message from the buyer that they were very excited. The M stands for their high school. So we had a high school student buy from us and sent us a nice message today that the M stands for their high school and their mascot and they'll be able to wear it to games and stuff. So that was kind of neat. I kind of like sometimes when you hear from the buyer when they're happy uh, about you know little stories like that like I bought this because the M goes for my high school and I'm gonna wear it to the games and stuff so that was cool uh, Keith paid 99 cents for this by the way at Goodwill alright guys this came out of the box that I was just talking about the big wholesale box we bought from the woman going out of business via Casey Casey, the Rockstar Flipper, in case you don't know who I'm talking about when I say Casey. Um, this was a two-piece wool suit, and we were very disappointed when we comped it. Typically, a wool blazer on its own is going to go for $30 or $40. This had the wool blazer and the skirt, but apparently this brand just didn't comp that high. But it sold pretty fast. It was up for less than a week, and we did 
accept the best offer on it of 20 the buyer paid the shipping though and it went to them in a brown box because in this case for us it went all the way to Washington in this case for us it was cheaper for the economy than the priority so we just had like this uh, brown box I think it came from Keystone I don't know where it came from but it fit in there nicely this also came out of that box this is a Tahari Arthur S. Levine blazer again listed for less than a week it went up the same time as the two piece this sold for $20. We accepted a best offer of $20. And it shipped in a padded flat. This Robert Graham shirt came out of that same box, guys. That box is the box that just keeps on giving. In fact, it has already sold enough that it paid for itself. Everything we're selling from it now is pure profit. And believe it or not, we still have some stuff in a pile that we're listing and still photographing from that box. We're still working on it. We are still, we still have stuff that we have to even photograph. Uh, but this came from that box too. We call it the box that keeps on giving. <laughs> um, Robert Graham, decent shirt. It's a decent size. It was a size large. Nice looking. Got the flip cuffs and everything. Sold for $34.60. <laughs> and I said it like that because it's exciting, but. Yes, this sold for $34.60, shipped first class in a poly bag. And then here we have a pair of Disney ears. Disney Performing Arts with a nice little music note in the mouse ears. These were not, um, you know, these are from the Disney parks, you can see right here. But it says Disney Performing Arts. Most of the mouse ears from there are just generic Disney World or Walt Disney World, Disneyland. Um, so I think, you know, the, the fact that these comped a little bit lower than I thought they would, um, is because it was the performing arts, but that's okay. I still pick up anything Disney I see if it's decently priced. I take a risk. This was 99 cents. Had a small scratch on one ear, which I photographed and disclosed. Uh, took a little while to sell couple of months uh, 99 cents into twelve dollars and 45 cents shipped first class in a box just to protect the ears because they're like a plasticky they could get bent and, and ruined and if they went in a poly bag Vera Bradley wallet 99 cents from the Goodwill just a nice little trifold wallet in the purple punch retired pattern trifold and it sold for $16 and shipped first class in a poly bag and here we have a really nice video game that was a bonus that came from the box that keeps on giving uh, this was not in the manifest when we purchased the box but it was in there showed up as a nice bonus it's unopened, brand new, in the box, sealed, but it's damaged. It actually was on the bottom of the box underneath all of the shoes and clothes, which was kind of a bummer. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, because some of these brand new like this were competent, like I think Keith's of maybe 50 or 60. And ours was uh, damaged. So it was supposed to go for $30 on sale. When it went 20% off, someone in between our sales offered us 30, so we just accepted it. Because if it had gone on sale, it would have been 30. They just happened to see it in between sales. We do run our sales, you know, pretty much 24/7. But every two days we have our sale end and restart, um, and there's like a half an hour gap in between. So when they offered us what we actually wanted for, of course we took it. So we shipped it in a box uh, just to protect it from getting any more damage to it. But this video game is definitely a bolo if you find it new, sealed in the package like this. Because we got 30 bucks for it even damaged. So that was pretty exciting. And lastly, do you guys remember these from a very, very, very recent haul? Dragon Quest 11 Echoes of an Elusive Age. 
These are uh, buttons that were a GameStop exclusive. If you pre-ordered the game from GameStop, you got these buttons. I found them at the Goodwill, paid 99 cents for them, and they shipped for, they shipped for, sorry guys, they sold for $20. Uh, so that was exciting. I just kind of picked them up and decided to give it a try, ran it by Keith, he's the video game nerd. And uh, they took like maybe three days to sell from being listed. So that was cool. Uh, 99 cents into 20 bucks. And then they shipped first class. We put just like a piece of cardboard around them to protect them and put them in a tissue paper around that and then put them in a poly bag. So that was the last thing I want to show you guys today. Let me know in the comments how your sales are, if you had any highlights or bolos of the week that sold for you guys, any home runs. Um, hit the like button for your lead. Helps the channel out a lot. If you haven't already and you'd like to, please subscribe to our channel and help us feed a hungry hippo. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We're at Flippin' Hippos across all social media. Don't forget to join our Facebook group. Link to join is in the description box down below. And until next time, guys, go be productive. Go list your faces off. We got two weeks till Q4. So go get ready for it so we can all make a lot of money and be very, very successful this year as we close it out. And uh, thank you so much for watching. You guys are the best. Have a wonderful night.